last video, we got to introduce to Llama Index, right? And it's an interface between uh, your large language models and any kind of external data, which can be uh, semi-structured, it can be structured, it can be unstructured, any kind of data, right? So there is a question many of you might still might have, uh, and if you have heard about Langchain, and we'll get into Langchain later. So when do you use Llama index? When do you use Langchain? When do you use Pinecone? And uh, of course, you'll start to understand this even better when you cover Langchain, but I'll give you a heads up information. So Langchain is pretty good if you want to create some application. That means that if you want to create agents, again, which we'll get into later on, um, Langchain is pretty good. If you want to create sophisticated mechanisms, if like chain prompting, etc., that means that you want to create a sequence of prompts and extract something from that. Things like that, Langchain is pretty good. Um, and Llama index is pretty good to index the data. And that's why it's, it's also called GPT index sometimes. So what it helps us mainly in connecting other data to a large language model. All right, and Pinecone, is really good at storing vector databases. So even though many of them, these frameworks also offer some functions to uh, do a lot of things, um, it's it's even really good if you use all of these together, depending on your application, right? Because if you want really good retrieval quality, et cetera, from your data, maybe you have to use Llama index. And uh, for really good scalable storage, you'll have to use Pinecone. And for good agentic workflow, you'll have to use Langchain. And we'll get into Langchain next. So for now, we'll focus on Llama Index and we'll see uh, a demo of something you can do with Llama Index. And uh, we already talked about data connectors, um, which Llama Index offers, right? So we can connect external things into with your large language model. So if you know about Notion, um, okay, if you don't know about Notion, Notion is a tool like which helps you create pages of data. And it's it's useful in the sense that we can have a to-do list, we can have a planner, like uh, there are a lot of, lot of things you can do with. It's an organizing app, basically, and it is used personally as well as um, by companies to keep track of things. Uh, and even if you do something like research, like I have in this uh, demo document. It's a, it's research notes and information about multimodal AI. So if you have things like this and you have some notes, etc., too, you can store it in that and it helps keep it organized. And uh, note that this is just an example I'm using. So Llama index um, in, in this hub called Llama hub offers a lot of data connectors too, like uh, a lot of connections uh, to, let me see, there is, yeah, there is connections to uh, Reddit, for example, you can uh, read it from uh, VV8. Um, and it, you, they also have like simple web crawlers, uh, with things which run on your browser. And a lot of connections with a lot of, like you even have a hugging face interface, you have a YouTube transcript reader. You can have all of these data connectors. And I'm just going to give you an example of uh, the Notion. Yep, I'm just going to use Notion here. And I'll see what we can do with that. Uh, so we have two pages and it's just probably, this can also be updated live, right? And we can also automate something like a summary uh, as a simple example. So every week, whatever you put in this, you get a summary as a PDF. That'd be pretty good. Or if you want to draft a report, or even if you want to start writing a paper with this, and you just want the outline, already you can probably set up a pipeline using Llama Index if you connect Notion to it. And if you, if you have some notes or if you have some suggestions, that might also be able to be, I mean, that also you can use in a large language model. You can add some prompt, uh, and then you can have that in a report or you can have that in a to-do list because you can write back to Notion 2 through two through this API. Okay. Let me just go to this notebook for now. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just, like I stated earlier, we'll use Llama index. We'll try to connect Notion with OpenAI. And um, it's not that... Uh, 
Notion gives uh, semi-structured data, right? Uh, we've talked about unstructured data, structured data, structured data, like maybe relational databases, anything like that, and unstructured, which is which could be uh, random information, like articles and all, which is unstructured entirely. So even images and all might come in that. And Notion gives you an API and it gives you a set amount of information, right? So it's it's semi-structured data. It's semi-structured. And uh, they give you an API. Um, you can explore this API, what they will give you if you want to work with Notion itself. But you are open to go to Lama Hub and open any of these and explore what interests you. This is just for a demo that I'm using uh, the Notion data connector. All right, um, let's just wait. Let me just clear the cells first. All right. Yep, this is what I was looking for. All right, let's just do this again. Okay, I don't think you can see the entire uh, API key, so it's all right. It's all right. This is uh, us just setting the OpenA API key and the Notion integration token. Um, don't worry about this uh, being exposed. I will uh, just remove this after this. Um, but you need to get this as well as the OpenA API key. So to get the Notion integration token, and that's just the Notion API key, right? You can just go to your profile uh, and then you can just find it there, right? And once you have a page created, you'll also have to connect it here and you can just have uh, the connections, right? It's already connected. And uh, let me just see. If you go to your integrations, you can see, okay, I have uh, created this. So you'll have to create an integration first and then you can uh, save it and then you can get the API key from it, All right? See, uh, you can just copy this, integrate, and this is your API key, API key for that. And it's connected to um, that page as well, All right? All right. Okay, uh, so we have run both of those. Now uh, we'll get the Notion page reader because we'll need that function to read whatever is in the page, all right. And here what I've given us uh, the page IDs, which you can just get it from the page. So if you go to the URL on top, um, let me just, I don't think you can see the URL here. I'll just paste it here for a bit. So this is the URL to this. And whatever is here, this is your page ID. Let you just copy that and then you bring it back there. Yeah, and that is the first page ID and we have two pages, right? We have demo and demo two. Uh, it just has some uh, random research data and uh, some notes. All right, let's go back here. Let's run that. So this is uh, reading the pages. All right, so it's loaded. And uh, we can print out uh, the metadata and the extra info from that, right? Okay, and it's also printing the first 100 characters, right? It looks fine. Now, we have the data and then of course we had, we need to index the data. So we'll just um, create an index from that. We've already done this uh, for Pinecone also that we'll have to create an index. Mm -hmm. And then we will uh, define our open AI models. So we're putting temperature a little bit higher. Uh, temperature is a topic which we've discussed before too. and. If the temperature is pretty low, that means that the probability, the uh, so when you have a large language model and, right. Okay. If you have n number of predictions for the next word, right? 
uh, this might have, let's say, a 90% probability, this might have 60%, this might have 50. So if you have a zero temperature value, it's most likely that this 90 will be selected. And as you increase the temperature, it's probable that some, something in the top will be selected, right? So it's good to vary uh, whatever is selected as the next output. Sometimes that helps. Uh, you can play around with that too uh, whenever you use this. I'm using 0 0.7 and I'm using uh, GPT 3.5 here. And then we define a query engine and this is a part of what you get with Llama index. We define that and then we give a custom prompt template. So we'll just say you're an AI assistant answering questions about Notion documents. And then we provide the context here in this context string. Um, and then we have to answer the query, which you give as a query string, right? Uh, let me run that too. Okay. I think I, right, let me run this again. Okay, we'll just, we, we have a query engine ready. So we'll just pass this query to it and then um, we'll save it as response one. So we'll just take some information from this. Okay, uh, we'll just, what are the main research findings or conclusions from these do Notion documents? It's querying both of these documents, right? Um, just go there and let's print that out. Yeah. Uh, language for multimodal yeah it seems it seems decent okay go to response to uh, we'll ask a specific question okay uh, zero improving zero short yeah yeah they give you a correct answer for this yeah okay this prompt does work we'll uh, at, ask some more prompts here. You, might, you can work around with this notebook. You can uh, play with this. You can try your own uh, Notion documents as well. But I'll just uh, ask these simple questions. The idea is that I'll add all of these responses up and I'll try to create a summary report of that. Right. So we have that. We have some key references also. Yep. And now what we can do is we can create another custom prompt um, based on whatever information we got, create a summary and uh, with these things. So we just pass these content and then you can just get it in this format, right? Uh, this is the prompt we're gonna pass. And um, since we already have these things before, we can just load that up. And we just give it to the query engine. Uh, summarize the research project, but we have changed the custom prompt. Just run that. Okay, it gave you an AI generated summary. Okay, it focuses on developing advanced vision, all right. Okay, that looks fine. Um, what we can also do is we can try to write this back uh, into this document. Because we generated a summary, we'll just write it back. Uh, we can try to run that. So we just load the API token again. Um, and we have this function from Llama index to update the Notion page. Um, and you can get whatever other functions you have for Notion from the Notion API, uh, from the Notion support, the data connection from uh, Llama Hub. So it says it successfully updated this page. Let's go check the page. Yeah, it just came here. So this is a summary we just wrote from using the last language model and Llama index. I just wrote it back. I'll just take this off for now. You don't need that. We can even just directly export that whatever PDF you got. Just save it. Um, we'll give an additional insights too, uh, maybe for even more. We can just use reuse the query engine again and again. Okay. 
Let's go there, we'll see. Yeah, we go with this. Let's download it. Okay. All right, it looks fine. Of, co of course, we have a lot of uh, scope here to create different types of tables possible if you just want the data from whatever you have. So a use case example would be uh, if you have a Google spreadsheet, right? So they have connectors for your Google Sheets and Google Docs, anything like that, even Google Drive. So what you can do is if you if everybody updates on Excel sheet and you want a weekly summary of that every week, you can still do that. Um, and using the specific data connector. And if you want comments on it, you want an analysis on it, you can connect it to a large language model. So, so let's say you have this Excel sheet of, let's say, sales. Okay. And you have this updated by people in a company, uh, maybe on a daily basis or something like that. And you can connect this whole sheet to a large language model and you can do a lot of things with it right um, of course if you have something like if even if you use langchain along with this and you have agents to do analysis that's that will be even nicer so i will also show you what we can do when we use all of these together so so far we've talked about vector databases and pinecone and all and we have talked about llama index too uh, i'll show you something more what you can do with llama index because now we've been just working with text data we'll just take a look at multimodal data also uh, in the next video but yeah you can do a lot of things using all of these frameworks which are available for large language models and in this example yeah you can have an analyst uh, to probably create a report every week you can even create graphs in that uh, you can automate that too so you have something every week and you can automate that uh, of course there, there can be small errors and hallucinations etc but that's when this comes in even more handy because with some kind of uh, retrieval and some data to reference um, the risk of hallucinations just reduces and uh, the ability to like confirm that the data is there the reference being there that's really useful um, so yeah have fun uh, creating apps with uh, Llama Index. Well, now you can try out some of these other data connectors too. In the next video, I'll show you something which you can do with images as well. All right. Thank you. See you.